Hey, what's going down, savages? Welcome to episode 39 of This Savage Life. I'm your host, Stéphane Paulin. Every time I try to do these intros, I try to not sound too much like I'm a radio host. You know that voice that you wrote, that that stripper DJ, like, hey, welcome to another episode of This Savage Life. And every time I listen to myself, I go, man, you still sound like that. I'm not trying to sound like that. If you guys think that like, oh, it's just, it's just not me. And every time I hit that record button and I always try to say the same things at the beginning, I just, you know, it's, it's, it's my podcast. I try to have certain things that are consistent with the podcast and my intros have pretty much been consistent the way I make them. But Sometimes I'll just, I'll stop, I'll, 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 I'll delete, and I'll restart it 58 times, you know. Today's one of those days. Today has been one of those days that kind of been shitty from the moment I woke up. I woke up with this dull headache, probably because of, you know, concussion issues I've been dealing with since February. Um, it's... I th- you know, sometimes I can go through five, six, almost, I can't remember the last time I had these symptoms. It's just, I woke up this morning, I had this dull headache, this like th- behind my head and it traveled all the, I could feel it all the way down my traps and my neck. It's, it's the same thing I've been dealing with for a couple of months since my injury. And I've been trying real hard to, when I feel the symptoms rise up, I take it easy and I know that I probably went too hard and it probably has to do, I I did some skipping rope yesterday that all that jumping up and down probably didn't really help me. I didn't feel it yesterday. I felt great. I had to, you know, I added some squats to that. I added some burpees to that. Like I just, I felt like working out yesterday. I worked out. I try to work out as often as I can right now with this injury though. I can't really push, push, push like I used to that's one number two i'm also at home and i have weights like i used to when i was when i was going back to the when i used to go to the gym so that's different also i've been i've had to adapt my my exercise uh, my workouts it is what it is i woke up this morning one thing then something else came up and, and it was just down you know when it's like a snowball effect i've used that analogy before it's just you know, you try to get out of that funk and then something else happens and then something else happens and you're like, fuck, it's kind of a write-off today. And you just got to, you know, just power through the day and make it through, get to the end and then tomorrow's another day. You got to stay positive as much as possible. But sometimes, just sometimes, it's fucking hard to stay positive. I mean, we, I think we can all agree we've all been there. We've all had those days where it's no matter how positive you try, you just... You're on the brink of a mental breakdown. It's just like I'm just barely holding it up together today. Like if if I like if somebody cuts me off in traffic, I might just fucking lose it. That kind of day. It wasn't even that. I was just. It was just really. Um, I woke up and instantly I was this in this mindset that I. It just. It wasn't good, and I know. I, I know normally I'm really good at, 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 at working real hard at, at changing my mindset from a, a negative one to a positive one. But like I said, once that snowball starts going down that hill of bullshit and just keeps accumulating bullshit, some days you just have to go, let's call it a loss. Take the L, like my son would say, and move on. And today was one of those days. But you know, If you're having one of those days just like me, you know it's going to make it better. Episode 39 of This Savage Life. Part 2 of my conversation with Jade Salter. Part 1 was episode 38. If you haven't done so, give it a listen. It's a great episode. We had a great conversation last Friday. Jade is a sports massage therapist. So talented, so smart, so good. I mean, she's worked on me, my wife, and, and many wrestlers that I know. Um, she's amazing and just the way she thinks her perspective on life is just, I, 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 I enjoy every single 
opportunity that I have to have a conversation with Jade, I take that opportunity. And I was so happy to have her on the podcast and be able to have a two hour long plus. I, I thought it was only about two hours. And then I checked the, the length. It was like two and a half hours. So part two about to drop right now on episode 39. We talked about, like, she's a massage therapist, and I don't even think we spoke that much about her expertise. We we just started a conversation, obviously, talking about how everybody's adapting during these times, and it seems to be what a lot of people talk about if uh, if you're creating content or if you have a podcast or even just on a day-to-day, it's like, it's on everybody's mind from the minute you wake up, it's the coronavirus and to the, you know, it's every time you talk to somebody or it, it comes up and it came up, but you know, we, we, we try to navigate through and all, do all that stuff. It was just a great conversation. And, uh, if you had listened to episode 38, I think you would agree that it was a great conversation. And this is the second part of this conversation of this conversation. So I really hope you enjoy part two of my conversation with Jade Salter. I've always had the vision for many years now. It wasn't always like this. You know, I always had a vision before when I was younger, like I wanted to be successful. I wanted to accumulate material things. I wanted a house. I wanted cars. I wanted nice clothes. I wanted to be able to go to the restaurant and, 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 and get, you know, like bring friends. And like, I always wanted, I always catered to that. And then, came to a point in my life where I'm like, no, that's, it's, it it can't, it's not good. I don't feel like it's the journey for me. It's the path for me. And then Mm -hmm. I've always had now for the past few years where I'm like, I just want to transition from this material lifestyle that we've been living for so long since I've been Mm -hmm. an adult. Like I told, you know, I tell this story a lot to people. I said, I moved out of the house when I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people that are, they're like, yo, the fuck that's young. Like, I'm like, yeah, I moved out. I came back home for a few months, but I, by, by 19, by 18, I was living on my own. I went to college, you know, and then I started working and then I never went back home and I've been living, providing for myself basically since I was 18, 19 years old. Yeah. I, there's a lot of tools you learn through that process that a lot of people Mm -hmm. only learn later in life. Mm. but it also easy. It, it was also easier for me to fall into this trap where like, well, you need to work to pay the rent. So your dream's going to have to take a back seat for now. Yeah. Right now you need to pay rent. You need to, Oh, you got a car payment. Now you bought a nice car that you didn't need, but you found was nice. Oh fuck. I need to make rent car payment insurance and all these things. And then I'm like, then you fall into this cycle of like mm. five years later, still doing all this. And mm. my dreams have, I haven't followed anything that mm. I've been really wanting to do for this past five years. And then one day I said, fuck it. And I quit my job, mm. really good job. Mm. And I moved halfway across the country. And I said, I need to, to move away from my comfort zone and see if I can really just make it on my own. Like I, like, like I was already on my own, but I was living where all my friends were living we're all living in the same town we're all partying we're all going out together every time i needed comfort i would everybody was a phone call away and i would just yeah. be like uh fuck my fuck my stress fuck my bullshit i'm just gonna go hang out with my friends and forget about everything and yeah. i had that luxury and i discovered that if i'm going to be whoever I, whoever i want to be or need to be i can't I can't, I need to force myself outside that comfort zone. And I did. And I I learned a lot of different, along the way, I learned a lot of different ways, but Mm -hmm. I feel like, I think there's a lot of people that are going to have to learn new life skills once all of this is back to normal. Like it's going to be like, like this is different now. How, Mm -hmm. like maybe, maybe I don't need to go back to work and work 60, 70 hours a week. And yeah, of course I have nice salary, I have a nice car, I have a nice apartment, 
like, fuck, look at me. I don't have time. I'm stressed out all the time. Now I've been at home not working. I've never been so relaxed in my life. I've never accomplished mm -hmm. so much on my personal mm -hmm. hobbies or whatever. Like it's, you got to choose to see it in a different perspective also. That's it. And I think it's interesting because everyone's very afraid, right, of the fact that this is going to force us into even more of like a, it's going to force us even more into our homes and into our, um, our bubbles that the government essentially is like forcing us to become sheep even more so, right, and just follow what they say and, and follow their protocols. But actually, I think inevitably it's going to have the complete opposite effect. Because by just taking this time and realizing like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm picking up a guitar that I haven't played in 10 years. Fuck, it feels so good to like play music and be creative. Or I'm going to go for a run. I, didn't, I, haven't run since I, was, I haven't run since I was 20 years of age. My God, that feels fantastic. But I think it's going to open up people's, people's perspective. Yeah. With like what they could actually be doing with themselves. Yeah, I mean, like, I had this funny thing. Okay, so I'm going to share something with you. Go, go. So, <laughs> so basically, uh, right before the, uh, the quarantine hit, um, I'd been just like, I don't know, I just, I, I was feeling like a little bit shitty. And I felt like I just wanted to, like, spend some stupid money on something that I just didn't need. You know that feeling where you're just like, fuck oh, yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, right? So I, I did something that I like, even just say say this to me that I was gonna do this like maybe six months ago, and I was I would have been like, what the fuck, dude, that's not you. But I decided, God knows why, probably because of fucking Instagram or something. I decided to go and get eyelash extensions. Okay, eyelash extensions, dude. It's not me at all. I want to go eyelash extensions. Do you know how much I paid for those eyelash extensions? Take a guess. Oh my God, how, so uh, 150 bucks. Yeah, a little bit more, $180 <laughs> <laughs> to have. The reason why I laugh is because if there was anybody else, I'd be like, okay, feel serious. Like my wife told me that, I'd be like, all right, but like you, like you just yeah. said, not like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I had fake fucking hair, probably someone else's hair, put on my own eyes. Not only that, I was there for three hours, dude, laying on this girl's table. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for three hours, I spent $180. Then when I walk out and she like, I'm paying, she's like, oh, well, you do also need this lotion to wash them in and you also need this brush and and at that point, I, I was like too down, too far down the tunnel. So I was like, "Are you sure? I guess I'll just buy those things too." Oh and shit! All there, spending like ridiculous amounts of money, lost three hours of my day, and so for the past like, I've, that was like uh, seven, eight weeks ago. For the past eight weeks, these eyelashes have just been like slowly falling off of my eyes. They're only supposed to last like three weeks. Okay. okay, that's what I was asking. I was like, how long are those supposed, are those no, like temporary or? No, they're only supposed to last three weeks. But I just feel like a fucking fool. Within like a couple of weeks, I was like, what the fuck did you do, Jade? And then I was thinking like, this is ridiculous. I'm never going to spend money like that again. But if quarantine hadn't happened, the virus hadn't happened, I bet you, I fucking bet you, I would be back in her chair three weeks later because I would have felt pressured because so many women are getting these eyelash extensions, yeah. right? And I probably would have felt pressured, like, well, now I guess this is something that is a part of my life, and I'm and I'm treating myself, and I'm making, I, I earn that fucking money. Do you know what I mean? Of course. And now I'm like, what the fuck was that all about? I'm never gonna spend that money ever again. It's ridiculous. And I just feel like I hope a lot of people that spend ridiculous amounts of money on stupid shit we just don't need are going to also have that that same experience i would hope so i really hope so i really really hope so that people that spent stupid amounts of money on things they didn't need every week every month every so whatever really go like i don't really need that yeah but fuck there's this then there's something in my head that goes you know that's not true 
you know that the people that are, I'm never going to do that again. And then when life goes back to normal, they'll be like, it's going to last a few weeks. And they'll be like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And there's anything I'm like, hey, Steph, how are you? Like, like super I like long him? eyelash. Like, how do you like him? <laughs> uh, Here's yeah. the thing. I'm going to share this. My wife is going to kill me, but I don't care. <laughs> okay. She, um, she has, she has gray hair, right? Okay. And she wants, she's been wanting to dye her hair this like a uh, light grayish blondish color. Okay. okay. So I've been telling her for a while, you should try it. It'll look good and stuff. The problem is, is that she has very dark hair so that it has to be like gradual. And the woman told her that she would need to grow out her roots. Okay. So, and she's like, I can't do that shit. She's like, hey, it's horrible. I can't, I can't. And I've been telling her, been telling her, she's going to kill me. I've been telling her, I said, just let it, your roots grow out. I've been telling her this for a while now. Yeah. Because I'm like, you're, you know, it's, she's like, I'm too young. I'm too young. I'm too young. I'm like, you are young. I said, but see, I, there's me and my wife see things the same, but there's a lot of things we don't see the same way. Like, like sure. when it comes to, to things like that, me, like I tell her, like, I feel like that by me, her husband telling her it's okay. You don't need to, she would, should like, she could just okay my husband doesn't need to like i i guess i can start feeling beautiful which i understand it's not the case like sometimes it's good it it feels good to have a new hairdo it feels good to to have new whatever new dress a new yes because i also feel the same way if i pair buy a new pair of shoes i'm like oh look at these new sneakers they're awesome i like wearing yeah. them i like parading them whatever so I said, during this point, I said, you have to let your hair grow out. Just let it. So she's been letting grow out, you know, and she hates mm -hmm. it. She like, ah, oh, she, she always complains about it. And I keep telling her, I said, it looks great. After a while, for me, I don't even notice it. Like, it's true. Like, I don't. If I look at it and you ask me to look at it, then I'm going to see it. But it's not something that every time I look at her, I go, oh, yeah, yeah. hair there, right? Yeah. So she's like, that's one thing. She's like, I can't wait to be out of this quarantine so I can get my hair done. So I can uh -huh. get this rid of, right? And yeah. as much as I push and I'm like, no, just let it grow out. It's natural. It's beautiful. You're sexy. I mean all those things. Of course. I also want her to feel like she wants to feel. And yeah. like if dyeing your hair and getting your hair done yeah. makes you feel great and you, you, you know, what, for whatever reason, go ahead. Like, I'm not a woman... And I have a daughter, though, and my daughter is, oh, I don't know how to explain it. It's rough. <laughs> I find, I feel that if a lot of parents see how my daughter is, they'd be like, holy shit. Really? And I'm like, I, I never want to be the parent that tells their kids they can't be, do, or say, or be anybody or anything they ever want. Yeah. I just... I have to be supportive of my kids because that's all I ask for my whole entire life is for mm. people to be supportive of my ideas and the things that I wanted to do in my life. Mm. So it'd be a kind of, I'd be kind of a big hypocrite if I told my kids that you need to be this and you need to be this a certain way and you need to live by those rules and live mm. blah, blah, blah. as long as they understand respect within each other and within, like I, we talked earlier about society and about living within a society and being, non-criminals basically i'm fine with that but i give my kids a big freedom when it comes to for example video games and being on uh, phones and technology mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i feel i truly feel that if i take those things away at one point in their life it's just going to be so part of their lives and they're going to be behind absolutely and when yeah. you know what i mean it's like mm -hmm. i feel like the our generation mine is a bit in between right i'm born in 1980 so i kind of fall into this millennial like i'm technically millennial but i'm like yeah. half and half right yeah kind of i kind of uh respect some of their ideology and their way of thinking but i also see a lot of things from the generation before me like, yeah. like christine for example like she's just two years younger than me uh older than me yeah. but she falls into generation whatever it is before millennials, right? Yeah. Is it X? X, I think so, yeah. Right. 
but I feel like I have a little bit of both. And people seem to forget that when we grew up, we grew up, we didn't have access to this. It was, it didn't exist. It didn't exist. Phones, smartphones weren't a thing. It, they weren't a thing. And people seem to believe, forget that in the time that when we were kids, our parents were kind of telling us the same things that they're, we're telling our kids now. You're on your phone too much. You're this yeah. or that. They were do, just doing it with something different. Mm -hmm. Your video games, you're on this Nintendo too much. You watch TV too much. Go mm -hmm. outside and play. And we did go outside and play way more than kids do now. Yeah. But there's also a progression and there's an, kind of an evolution, if you want to call it that, right? Mm -hmm. Through the generations. Like, my kids were born in a day and age where they have never lived without internet. They have never lived without smartphones. They yeah. have never lived without TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook. Ooh, it's just, for them, it's yeah. just TikTok, nothing else. Yeah. Like, nothing else matters. Mm -hmm. And it's like, at a certain point, like, it's like, I can't fight it. You, you, I, I feel like it's just you, they're either going to grow up resenting you for taking that from their lives yeah. when they see 99% of the other. And I don't mean to, to parent my kids how everybody else parents their kids, but I also want my kids to be given the best possible chance to be able to function yeah. in, in the future and the future, yeah. society, right? And be yeah. adaptable. Like my kid can go on Zoom now by himself from his phone twice a week. Yeah. You don't need to show him anymore. He just goes mm -hmm. click, click, and he puts his AirPods on and he sits yeah. in his bed. Like, I mean, uh, I remember I had a really good conversation with um, a client of mine. So his son is, I guess he's probably about Caden's age. I think he's nine. Okay. So he's constantly on um, Fortnite. Okay. Yeah, my son too. Yeah. And I was chatting with my client about it and I was like, oh, you know, we were talking just about kids and video games. And I was saying to him, like, the one thing I just cannot understand that kids have an interest in is watching other people play video games. You know, like YouTube videos of people playing video games. Like, my, son do my son does that all day, every day if he's not on yeah, the Yeah, right. Exactly. So, and he said, he, he, he explained it to me in such a way that I've never had anyone explain it to me before. It's fantastic. He said to me, you know, when my son goes online to play Fortnite, he's not turning on the console and, or, or the P PC or whatever it is. I sound so old right now. He's not like turning it on to like go online. It's a part of his reality. Like when he's saying goodbye to one of his friends at school, he'll say, I'll see you on Fortnite. Yeah, like it's literally it's, it's his reality. It's not the same as us, where we almost see. It's almost literally like reality is a little bit warped for kids now. In terms of like, we can really see. Like you and I are very much aware of the fact that we're talking through this device right now. Yeah. Whereas for a kid, like this is reality. It's like a, it's like it's like a whole other perspective, a whole other way of seeing technology that we just we've. And we never, we will never, ever, ever understand that because of the fact that we, we've had to be conditioned into using technology, whereas yeah. kids, like it's, it's, it's their reality. From day one, right? Yeah. It's there from day one. And they yeah. see, young kids see parents at a young age go like, they're all integrated into this technology. How do they expect me not to be integrated in that yeah. technology? The yeah. thing with Fortnite that I'm slowly, that like my son been playing Fortnite for a while mm -hmm. and ever since we've been at home he plays a lot more and because you know we make sure he does his schoolwork, we keep we have we have a schedule but a lot of time when it's outside that schedule he's on Fortnite because he gets to play with his friends from school mm -hmm. yep. he gets to play with other, other friends other people he met online and my son is smart enough to if that person is treating him like shit. He blocks him and he like, he won't, he doesn't fuck around. He's like, Nope, you're trash. You're toxic. That's the word they use. You're toxic. You're toxic. And they'll stop yeah. playing with people. Oh yeah. Yeah. I listen and hear my, here's the thing though. I, I would, you know, it's, it's upsetting sometimes because I hear everything because he puts his headphones on, he puts his mic on and they speak and the way they speak to each other. I was like, how, 
how do you get to speak to other kids like that and they still want to play with you every day? You call them trash a million times per day. They're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, we all call each other trash. And I'm like, I, I don't get that concept because if me and my friends were playing a game that we have to interact face to face and I kept calling someone trash, <laughs> after a while you'd be like, yo, motherfucker, like, can you stop calling me trash? And they, yeah. they get to that point. Yeah. That's the thing with Fortnite and video games though, that's why all the current video games that are trending are not what we used to play. When I play, mm -hmm. I go on my PS4 and I play football. It's, it's a football game. It's a sports game. Now kids, they play Fortnite. They play Call of Duty. They play all these mm -hmm. games mm -hmm. where they play as an avatar. And like for Fortnite, mm -hmm. for example, you buy all these skins, which yeah. is different costumes of what you look like, right? They don't make you better. They just make you look different. And you mm -hmm. can buy, there's different ones available every other day. And my son is constantly, can I have V-Bucks? V-Bucks is what you need to buy those things. So okay. the game is free. The game is free, but you get to spend, right. your parents get to spend money on the game. Now, <laughs> now, these kids, the more they play Fortnite, they gain experience, which makes their avatar, their person online better. Yeah faster mm -hmm. kills faster it receives less damage right. so every day they go online just at experience level goes up little by little so obviously by playing the game yeah sorry so you have to interact with it in order to better yourself yeah. not only does it make you better the more you play the game obviously because mm -hmm. i watch my son now it's insane to how fast he can go from doing one task to another, to another, to flipping, to going from different screens. Like, to, to I'm like, yo, like I can't even come close to computing what you mm -hmm. just did in 30 seconds. It blows my mind. But I also have to think about it. Like when he logs on to Fortnite, he, does un, he doesn't log on as Kate, as, as my son. Mm. He logs on as that player that's been yeah. accumulating experience every yeah. time he plays and at end of every single play time he's just a little bit better and he's just mm -hmm. a little bit better and he's just a little bit better and he gets to change it's like it's like the early early on uh yeah. that it's like they're slowly connecting themselves with this kind of virtual reality where mm -hmm. fortnite becomes yeah. this all sort and it's all competition yeah they have this sense of they're missing this filter of they'll tr talk trash to someone where I'm like, yo, like, if like mm -hmm. you're going to do that face to face with another person that you're going to get punched in the nose a lot. And he would probably respond by saying, no, no, I wouldn't do that in face to face. Yes. But with reality, this reality is. I can do that. It's yeah. the ultimate reality. Yeah. But it bleeds into the one and the other if you're no, not well, careful. That's the thing. So when it? I notice my son, it starts bleeding too much and his attitude starts getting shitty towards us, I go, yo, off of it for a bit. Mm -hmm. I kind of, you got to take a step back. Because I think what's interesting is, I could be wrong, but I feel like there hasn't been much research into how is, how are we as human affected by interacting with these ultimate realities with vr for example like when you go to bed at night if you dream let's say you have a nightmare well yeah it's not real of course not but your body is still going through that chemical cascade of where your hormones and hormones are going to be excreted um adrenaline is going to be pumping through you you're going to start sweating, your nervous system switches into the sympathetic nervous system, like your entire body is reacting as though there is a monster in the room that you have to fight, even though it's not your actual reality. It is somewhat your reality because your body is responding to that. So yeah, it's not his reality that he's not actually playing that game. He's not actually bullying that kid or he's not being bullied. But at the same time, he's still, yeah, like you said, like it is still a part of his reality. His body, it is. 
conditioning is still being affected by that. And I don't think we have, I don't think we've been interacting with technology long enough yet to know what the full effects are going to be, you know, of ultimate reality and VR. Yeah. I see it in this, my kids, and I'll tell you how I see it going. It's going to get to a point where kids or people that are born into this technology so kids that are being born right now as we speak it's even going to be worse right in five when they start using technology in five six seven years it's going to be so much more advanced Absolutely. they're slowly the people that build these machines are extremely smart and they're doing it and then one of the things that i think is going to be apparent from watching my kids is that it's not going to matter what you look like mm -hmm. you look in the mirror it's not gonna like because as boys kid, people are going to see you for your Fortnite avatar they're going to know you by your Fortnite mm -hmm. avatar or by the guy they see on youtube playing games yeah they'll see oh so and so i watch him i watch all of his videos on youtube while he plays Fortnite because that's what mm -hmm. they do right and then that he becomes this character he becomes this to some, they, they're so good that they're gods to a lot of these young kids. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, this guy Ninja, like, that's a gamer. And, they, and mm -hmm. they, they all know who he is and they all know how great he is. And it's like, oh my God, he's so good. He's so good. Same thing with girls. Mm -hmm. They go on Instagram. They go on TikTok. They're able to put all these filters where people don't know who they really are. Mm -hmm. They get to be someone completely different online than they are with their parents and on day to day. Absolutely. But like you said earlier, like they didn't get integrated in that. It's mm -hmm. just their full blown reality. And so mm -hmm. when you try to explain to them why they shouldn't be doing so, they go, I don't yeah. understand because I don't have yeah. any other perspective to look yeah. at. I haven't lived the life mm -hmm. you've lived and seen the other side of the table, mm -hmm. you know, like, like my kids, as much as they are on technology, especially during this time, like this week, I mm -hmm. bought plants, tomato plants and all this. And I was transplanting a bunch of stuff in the back, in the back on the balcony. And they mm -hmm. all joined, they all dropped their phone. They all dropped their controllers mm -hmm. and they were like, can I help? Can I help? And they love getting their hands dirty and they love helping me. And every day mm -hmm. can we water? Like, I'm not worried. As yeah, that's true. my kid gets attitude i'm like i'm a fucking i'm a father i have a job mm -hmm. yeah. I, it's my responsibility to kind of decide how much rope i'm willing to allow them that's and it if i'm one of those parents that allows yeah. more rope than the one and the other yeah then I can't give a shit about what other people are going to think. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, look at this mother. He lets his kid be on the phone all the mm -hmm. time or he's on Fortnite. Like, don't judge me. Because I allow my kids yeah. a little bit more leeway than, than you allow your kids. Okay. Like, okay. like I, I, ain't, I ain't in the business of judging other people's parenting or judging other people. Yeah. I'm in the business of making sure I do things the way I believe it's best for my family, my little okay. unit of four people. I think one of the main things, I mean, I, I could be completely wrong because I don't have kids, but I think one of the main things that I, it, it, it is important as a parent is to teach worth, right? Is to teach the worth of anything, the worth of human interaction, the worth of spending time with you while you're out on the balcony doing with your, with your tomato plant, to the worth of what it is to have the luxury to sit and play a video game for a few hours, you know? Yeah. Like I think once you teach a child how to recognize the worst of something, then they will probably be intelligent enough to be able to add all the dots together and then maybe to begin to understand like, well, I can, I can play for four hours of Fortnite and I can go and help dad grow tomatoes. Yeah. And I can appreciate both. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think if you're able to teach worth and value in such a way, hopefully they they are intelligent enough that they can put the dots together and, and work out themselves. I yeah. think a thing that's important with kids is, is that at a young age, you need to instill in them uh, the value of uh, when you do something, uh, something well, mm. the recognition of doing something well, or the, f the recognition of learning a new skill. Mm. No matter what that skill is. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of parents limit 
a lot, put a lot of limits on what they allow their kids to learn. Yeah. They don't put the emphasis on simply the learning, uh, the process of learning and the, 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 the journey of learning a new skill mm -hmm. and how it makes you feel. Yeah. Even as an adult, like I yeah. started baking bread during all this time and it took me a long time to figure it out. But yeah. finally I figured it out and I made a loaf that was edible. And I was like, yeah. like, yeah. like no matter, like I will never force my kids into doing something they don't want to do. But mm -hmm. like for martial arts, for example, like if you were to ask my daughter before this, like, Hey, would you, is martial arts something you'd be interested in doing two or three times a week? If I signed you up, she'd be like, <laughs> no, nah, not really. But then when I, her and her brother and I, I didn't force it, but I said three times a week, an hour a day, we're going to do martial arts. It's, it's part of your going to school. Yeah. Okay. They didn't argue. And now it's like, if you're a parent where when your kids learn something new, yeah. you encourage it, number one. Not only do you encourage it, but you correct it at when needed. And you make sure you tell your kids they're doing a good job when they're either correcting something they were doing wrong or they're automatically doing something right. Yeah. And by instilling that, those values of like, doesn't matter what skill I want to do. I know my parents are going to support me. Mm -hmm. And I know that whatever I'm trying to do every day that I'm learning a little bit, a little bit, I feel better about myself. Yeah. I feel more confidence about myself. When you start making those connections from doing something, being more confident, like, like the post I made today, like, like, the reason I teach my kids martial arts is because I know they're going to be more confident, guaranteed. They're going to be more disciplined, more mm -hmm. focused, and they're going to be better athletes. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not going to force my kids to be athletes in life, but it doesn't hurt if they're athletic because yeah. in the future, if they yeah. do want to have venture into something, something where they're going to need to be like physical, they're going mm -hmm. to have that tool. Mm -hmm. I'm just in the business of providing my kids with as many positive tools as possible so that when life throws something at them, they'll be like, oh, all right. My dad yeah. taught me this. My, my mom taught me that. Mm -hmm. And just being, just explain to them that no matter what you do, there's a process of learning you and you got to pay attention and you got to recognize when you're doing it wrong. And then you got to have to adjust along yeah. the way, you know, yeah. like, I used to see things where I would put a, a, I would put a goal at the end of the road and I would visualize that goal. And then mm -hmm. I would constantly run towards that goal or try to pull that goal toward that thing towards me so I could become yeah. that thing. And then I slowly realized that when you do that, you don't enjoy the process. The process is, mm -hmm. is all yucky and garbage because you're doing, it feels like work every day to accomplish, mm -hmm. to get to a point. Now mm -hmm. what I do is I go day to day. I go, am I better today than I was yesterday? And what do I need to do tomorrow to be just a bit mm -hmm. better than today? Yeah. It could be anything. Pick one thing. Today, I'm going to be better at this. I'm going to learn something new. I'm going mm -hmm. to be better at a skill. Mm -hmm. This is why when, I, when the, this whole thing hit, I saw an opportunity with technology to do a lot more podcasting because I yeah. genuinely yeah. wanted to be better at this podcast business. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, I have an opportunity. Everybody's at home. Let's do this. And everybody's been on board with it. And I'm like, I'm happy. I yeah. get an opportunity to be better at something. Absolutely. And my kids are the same way. And people sometimes they just want to instill their own values into their kids without yeah. thinking of the, of what their kids might want or might yeah. desire because Again, your kid's reality, like you explained it earlier, is absolutely not the same reality as you. And when, especially when it comes to technology and, and being uh, either a, a girl in this today's society or being a guy in today's society. Yeah. There's so much more information out there and so much different perspective you can yeah. look at. Absolutely. I, I don't know. Absolutely. But it's, uh, I mean, I think one of the main things as well is, is to also teach just to, to follow through. Like, I think it's something that I, I, I saw a lot, of, a lot of people in my life that I was growing up with whose parents 
were very supportive and were allowing them to just say, you know, I support you in whatever you do. And, and I think they were a little too liberal as well with the way that they delivered that because a lot of my friends, they ended up doing so many different things but never really finishing anything. Do you know what yep. I mean? Like, they would enter into something, they would start to do it, and they'd be like, oh, fuck it, now I'm going to go do something else. <laughs> there you go, okay. So it's so important to also just teach that, like, you can't just start baking a cake, put all the ingredients in the bowl, start mixing it, and then be like, oh, no, you know what? I want to bake a loaf of bread instead. I'm going to leave that bowl on the side. No, you have to know. You have to follow everything through. Like you said, follow the journey, because you never know what you might learn along the way as well. That is then going to teach you once you bake that cake how to bake the bread. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you just put the cake batter on the side, maybe you won't even know how to bake the bread because you didn't learn what you needed to learn from finishing that cake. And and that's, that's an important skill to teach a child, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's exactly my journey. I mm -hmm. was left with a lot of freedoms as a young kid. Like I was like one of those latchkey kids where like parents, my mom, single mom right uh work had to work my i lived with my grandparents until i was 17 18 mm. until i moved out mm. my grandparents worked my grandma was a nurse my grandfather was a mechanic and they were retired later on in life but they didn't feel the need to parent me as my you know as real parents because they were my grandparents they were a lot mm. more liberal with what i could and couldn't do and you mm. know my mom was around but she didn't, she didn't live there from 10 on, right? So as of 10, my mom lived uh, with her boyfriend and I decided mm -hmm. to stay with my grandparents. I would see my mom all the time, and, but it was completely different. You know, my, I was, they kind of said, well, he's smart enough, you know, and just learn along the way. And, uh, and I did. And as much as it taught me many things, how to be independent, how to figure shit out on my own, it also left me with like that sense of like, things will just happen. I, I felt I, I became entitled and yeah. thought that all the negative will never happen to me. And one day I'll have that car. I don't know how, but one day I'll have it. I'll yeah. have that house. I'll have the money. I don't have to worry. Why would I worry? That's how I see everybody else living life. Why shouldn't my, yeah. because those values weren't taught properly to me. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, you need to work mm -hmm. hard. And it wasn't until I discovered martial arts at 24 where I went, oh, you actually do have to finish things in order to feel yeah. rewarded and actually mm -hmm. grow as a person. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I don't have that discipline. Mm -hmm. Martial arts will teach you that discipline. So yeah. I followed the journey of martial arts until it took me into a different path where I felt the need to grow into as a different person. And then I am who I am now. But mm -hmm. Yeah, when you said that, it yeah, that rings a bell because I know exactly what you yeah. mean. That. And yeah. I, and if there's one thing that I'm gonna make sure is that I'll make sure that, obviously, like I said at the beginning of this conversation, like <clears throat> my kids have it good. You know, two parents at home that love them, that cherish them, that yeah. is uh, uh, that we're there for our kids, we support our kids, and we love each other as we, well. At the end of the day, me and my wife are mm -hmm. simply here to make give them the the best possible chance of being successful in life, mm -hmm. not successful. Successful is such a word that can mean so many different things for people. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I believe, like, I want to be successful, but successful according to my standards mm -hmm. and my vision. Like, mm -hmm. I want to soon live on a house with a, f a little farm in the back and have, the, like, I have a vision to how I want my life to be at a certain point in my life. Yeah. And... It, that's that's all that matters to me and yep. slowly i'm starting to move away from listening to people that tell me otherwise or that tell me yeah. i'm foolish or that tell, i don't even pay attention to them and mm -hmm. they're probably not even talking at this point because a lot of people now are like i'm just gonna mind my own business right yeah for sure i'm right there with you with the farm like that's, huh? that's that. i'm right there with you with the farm that is literally my dream yeah. it's funny because when i when i moved here 10 years ago, I really said to myself, like, I, this is the kind of city that I can see myself living in for the rest of my life because it's, it's a very easy city to live in for the duration of your life. London yeah. cannot do that. You cannot. Like, you, you're going to have to slave for your entire life in order just to afford to live in, in a city London. 
Whereas here, like you can afford to live here for the rest of your life if you want yeah. to. And I really thought I was going to do that. And then in the last couple of years, I realized that the one thing I value the most that I miss is space. Just like, just literally just space. Like, the, like, like being around land. Yeah. You know, and, and being able to grow my own shit, my own vegetables and, and just time and space. And so that's definitely my dream. Within the next few years, I, I want to live in, in the countryside. It's, uh, it's something that I never thought I would want in life. Like I went from living that life, like coming from a small town to being, you know, and, and wanting, I felt that I always needed something bigger that I needed something mm -hmm. uh, like, I don't know if it was the chip on my shoulder talking or whispering in my ear, or if it was mm -hmm. that part of me that was just lost and needed to be away from something that I had never experienced in life so that I could break through my mm -hmm. comfort zone and become the man that I need. Like there's so many different ways I could look at it. At the end of the day, there's things that I do now where I like, I've always been one to take the long road toward to something and people will be like why are you taking the long road like because the long road gives me the opportunity to learn way more yeah. i, I it, it might take me too. more long longer it might take me longer but at least the tools that i'm going to learn throughout the process through that journey i can i can then use those tools into the next uh step the next part of my life absolutely absolutely yeah yeah i feel i feel i feel like this time is going to give that opportunity to a lot of people and i think that hopefully when we all get back to living life people will just be a little bit more reckon like they'll realize a bit more that how their way of thinking and their mm -hmm. lifestyle can affect people around them in not such a positive way mm. like I, as much as I, I as much as i do certain things that cons consistently that are cheesy and people may think like it's easy to point the finger and go like he just does that to fucking get a few likes like that's the world we live in now he just mm -hmm. does that there's a few things that i consistently do just simply because i know that it might put a smile on someone's face it might just like every post I put on uh, on Instagram now, I always end with much love because I always feel like I I really try hard to not put, post any negative bullshit on my social mm -hmm. media because I'm mm -hmm. like it's filled with negative. Social media is filled with negative bullshit. Why would I add to this shit? Like I'm not angry at anything. Why would I make up a point about being angry or or just sharing something negative? Mm -hmm. I try to be as positive as possible or as educational as possible. That's why yeah. like if I truly believe in in someone that i follow on instagram like you for example like if i see before all this you had like i would be like share 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 because i'm like <laughs> i've experienced with her and she's great please everybody needs to know who she is right I, that's positive for me and that's what more more people are going to start doing through yeah. this yeah. new world yeah that's what i hope so anyway, like I, I, at the Absolutely. end of the day, when everything comes back to normal, my kids are going to go back into a world that's going to be completely different. And I want mm -hmm. that world to be better off than it was before all this. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's incredible though, eh? How, so this really like kind of hit in Canada, I guess like, yeah, it was around the 12th, 13th of March. Today we're the 8th, right? Yeah. So it's basically been three, no, it's two months, two months. So in two months, We've had all these profound thoughts and ideas and like maybe even changes in how we want to live our life and people are getting divorces and, like, and that's crazy in two months. Which and these are things that take people maybe 10, 15, 20, 30 years to realize. Like it's incredible and profound what can happen when you literally just take two months off of your life. And yeah, okay, our lives are somewhat not threatened, but mortality. Our mortality is kind of like right at it, right at our door. You know? Yeah. You know, we're realizing like like that. I just have to go lick a doorknob, and I could be dead. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like it's it's pretty incredible how fast that shift has happened. Yeah. 
You're absolutely right. And I think it goes back to what you said at the beginning is like time is different because a lot of people are forced to look at these issues and to deal with these things when before they were all, uh, they were being kept doing something else, going to work, kept them busy, going yes. to the gym, kept them busy. Cool. I don't have to deal with my shitty marriage at home. Mm -hmm. I don't have to. I don't have to. I'm only with this guy three hours after I come home to the gym. He goes to sleep. We barely speak yeah. to each other. Yeah. I don't have to deal with it. Oh, fuck. Now I have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. That's one part. And also, I think a lot of people like me and like many have taken the time to look, to really like assess their lives and go like, Whew. Like I have an opportunity here to change my life. Am I willing to take it or just willing to sit on the couch for two or three months until this is done and go back to living normal, which yeah. some are going to do. But Absolutely. also I think someone like me is going to go like, you know what? There's things in my life I don't need anymore and mm -hmm. they're not going to be there anymore and mm -hmm. I'll be better off. So. <sighs> yeah. What are we going to do? <laughs> I have no idea, but I'm never spending $180 on four hours. Hey, Jay, what did you learn throughout all this quarantine? I uh, don't spend $190 on fake lashes. Huh? That's about it. That's, That's crazy. It. Yeah. But you know, I was actually, like, along with that thought, I was thinking, like, ah, all these people that get, like, Botox and fillers, that you don't just have one injection. And then it's, it becomes an addiction. That's like every two or three months that they have to get that shit or their faces start collapsing. There's yeah. a lot of people out there right now. It's, they become it's depending on that. Collapsing. Yeah. There's probably a lot of faces melting off. Melting off. That's why they haven't <laughs> been on Instagram all this time. They'll be like, fuck, my face is melting <laughs> off. I can't see my plastic surgeon. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Uh, yeah. When you added those eyelashes to you, <laughs> yes. How did you feel a sense of like, woo, like look at me now? Like you, you said before, you said before you did it because you felt shitty. You felt like like you were just going through a funk or something, and you're like, let yeah. me buy something, let me splurge on something I wouldn't normally do. Like I do it. I do it now so often that it's become like subconscious. I go on Amazon, I'm like, I don't need this, but it'd be fun to have. <laughs> Then I look at my bank account. I'm like, oh, yeah, I can afford this. And then I click. And then uh, three days later, I have it at home. And I'm like, why the fuck did I buy this? Yeah. So yeah, stupid, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have that feeling of like, oh, I feel better about myself? Or was it instant regret? Um, it's a really good question. It wasn't instant regret, no. But... Like, I, I just remember immediately, okay, so I don't know if you know anything about them, but you can't wash your eyes. Like, you can't, like, do this. Oh, so, shit. Yeah. So, like, basically, what that meant was I was then submitting myself to X amount of week of not being able to, like, touch my eyes. Holy crap. And so that instantly, I was like, oh, that's a really weird thing that I just do that I can't do now. So that was like a little bit weird. And yeah, I mean, I, I guess like I, I probably kept kind of trying to convince myself that I did look good. And so maybe that was worth getting it. But yeah. it wasn't like, oh my God, now I feel so different. Look at me, I'm walking on water. No, like, no, 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 no. I didn't feel anything like that at all. Um, yeah, no, like there, there are a few select material objects in my life that it doesn't matter how many times I use them or look at them. I, every time I'm filled with the same moment of like, oh, I'm so glad I fucking bought this. This makes me so happy. And, and, and that feeling is so great because you realize that's what real worth is. Like that's why I spent that money on that thing was because Every single time I look at it, it's been X amount of years, I still feel fantastic. Every yeah. time I put this pair of jeans on or every time I smell this perfume or I use this bowl or whatever, you know, it feels fantastic. And um, yeah, no, I didn't have that feeling with those false eyelashes. So, yeah. As someone that um, 
I'll, I'll ask you this question because I feel like you can give me a different perspective. Uh, because it's one thing that I noticed early on during this quarantine is that I was noticing a lot more tits and ass on my timeline. <laughs> okay. Women were like, okay, like I don't follow a lot of Instagram models or whatever you would categorize as Instagram models. So, but early on, a couple weeks in, I started realizing that people that would never post any pictures of themselves in any sort of part particular way, cleavage, yeah. ass yeah. out, you know, the pose, right? You've seen yeah. it. I was seeing a lot more of those. And I started mentioning that as a joke, like, hey, a lot of you girls are, I didn't say girls. I said a lot of you people are being a lot more liberal with your, what you're posting online. And people are like, of course, and like, a lot of people are used to a certain amount of attention that they get from their looks when they go to the gym every day, when they go to their mm -hmm. store every day. They're, they're used to being gawked upon because they're so physically attractive. Yeah. Now they're at home and they're like, how am I going to get that same attention? Yeah. So they post a slutty picture of themselves and then they get all the likes and all the comments and all the DMs and all the dick pics, all of that. Yeah. They don't want those things. They're like, oh, dick pic, disgusting. But when you get 30 of them, you're like, score. Like there's this, I feel like there's a part of social media. That's the part of social media where as a father of a, of a daughter, I have mm -hmm. to be careful, right? I, yeah. But I also do not want to be that father that's like, don't do that. No. Truly, no. I like, it's no. like, fuck. In fact, like, my God, it's so, imp oh, go on, go on, go, 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 go. But my question was, as someone like you, like you, like, you are a very professional, uh, you're a businesswoman, very business oriented. You use social media strictly for the most part to show your great pictures, but I would never see a picture of you all like, you know, you know where I'm getting at, right? <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at these new yoga pants I got. Like, why are you wearing a bra <laughs> if you're showing me your yoga pants? Like, why do I need to see all that? And you can just hang them off of the hanger and be like, <laughs> hey, right here. Like, <laughs> yeah. Is there, I guess what I'm asking is that, is, is it something that's inside women? Because let's face it, I don't want to generalize, but for the most part on my timeline, it's not guys showing me their asses and their cleavage. It's a lot of girls. And it worries me because I have a daughter, right? And I just wonder, is it something that you, that's inside, uh, like you, you guys are born with, with that instinct of validation, I guess, searching out for that validation in a certain way? Or is it something mm. that's just simply learned through either society or through parenting? Mm. It's a hard question. I don't want to feel like I'm so big, like I'm just this man, just like you. I don't know that it's that hard, like to answer that. Like I think, I think in all honesty, you know, like, I'm I'm a huge. I really believe in. I mean, it's it's undeniable. You know, it's, it's not like a, it's not like a, a hippie woo woo thing. That I believe in. Like I really do believe that. You know, that society is built on the patriarchy. And we we all perpetuate it. Like like women perpetuate the fact that men are better than women because it's a part of the conditioning that we've been grown up that we've been brought up in. Do you know what I mean? Like, and this is this is why like shit like the Me Too movement is is so complicated because it's it's not enough to call someone out um, on sending inappropriate messages to a woman, like calling out some actor being like, he's disgusting, he sends dick pics. It's not enough to just call him out. Like we have to start re-educating. It's the cancel women. culture, right? That's what they call it, yeah. cancel culture. They want to cancel everybody. We have to re-educate everyone. We have to re-educate society. We have to re-educate our boys in order to understand that you know what? You can't do that. We have to re-educate our girls in order to turn around and say, like, you shouldn't have to just accept that you're going to receive messages like that. Yeah. So I really believe that. So, but so when you when we start to like recognize, like, fuck, we're kind of fucked. 
in terms of the fact that society is built on the patriarchy, then we can start to understand like some of these behaviors that like, you can begin to understand like why a, a girl would choose to put herself you know on facebook or whatever tiktok um showing half of her body off in a very provocative way because it's not that she necessarily even wants the attention from everyone or anyone it's just that she believes that that is her reality her reality is this is what you do yeah in it's not that she's looking for attention of boys or men it's not that she's looking for attention from anyone she might be a lesbian she yeah. doesn't want any she doesn't want dick pics she doesn't want guys but she believes that in order to function as a woman in society in order to feel validated she has to have an attractive body and she has to show that off and that's part of her currency you know like I that's reckon. that's where I'm getting at because now yeah. girls are making money by yeah. posting those pictures and by going on sites like OnlyFans where you they'll you'll, yeah. they'll show a certain uh, part on uh, uh, they'll show yeah. on Instagram a limited amount of pictures and they'll be like hey if you want if you want the nude ones if you want the real good ones yeah. you got a twenty five okay. bucks a month yeah and they girls make. Yeah. millions of yeah. dollars now just doing yeah. that like you said the the girl might be a lesbian and not be attracted to men but she knows she's attractive and she knows her self-worth and she's like i made $130,000 last year uh posting uh provocative pictures online i have 2.1 million even. followers my pictures of her feet do you know what i mean like yeah and the thing is is that like i'm the first person that will turn turn around and 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 say like i fully believe that like i think it is important so important for us to normalize nudity and it's so important for us to normalize sexuality like yeah. i think that like, recently steven spielberg he turned out did you hear about his daughter no okay so steven spielberg this is fantastic steven spielberg came out and said i want the world to know how proud i am of my daughter My daughter is, I think she's like 35 or something. And she's basically built an empire around being both a porn star and a stripper. And he came forward and he's like, I'm so proud of her. She could be, um, uh, she could be a filmmaker or she could be a stripper. I don't give a shit because she's healthy. She's happy and she's doing what she loves. And she's got, she's got balls, you know, like she's a businesswoman. She knows yeah. what she's doing. She's, And, and so I'm the first person that will turn around and say like, you know what, you do whatever the fuck you want. Like, I think it's so beautiful and healthy to be, to be so in love with yourself and your body and, and, and in love with sexuality and showing off sexuality. I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. I think there'll be a fucking fantastic society. We were all like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I think it's problematic when women turn around and, and, and do things like get on something like only fans, like this thing yeah, and try and screw over people by taking their money, by, by taking certain pictures, because what, what that is, we're basically just further perpetuating the patriarchy. They might think they're saying like, well, fuck them. If they want to give me $50, $60 for a five minute strip show online. Yeah. You know? Fuck them, it's their money and I'm going to take their fucking money. But you know what? You're actually just further perpetuating the problem. You know? So it's... So it's, as much as you want to look at it from one perspective, you also have to realize that there's a... I think that the, the, the danger with that is that a lot of people don't know where to set their boundaries. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. Sometimes it's not about that girl that is posting those pictures online, but it's about the people that are absorbing that information and their mm. boundaries. Yeah. And they overstep their boundaries. Like, Hey, look, motherfucker. Like I'm just trying to make a living here. I have yeah. a nice body. I have big boobs. I'm sorry. I use them. I make money. I pay for my own house, for my own car. I yeah. give money to my family. And yeah. outside these pictures, I function very well in society. Yeah. And for the most part, people don't even know what I do for a living. Yeah. And, but mm. they're, they're like, But people want to judge. They'll be like, oh, you're, you're doing it. it. 
the sexuality part of it is that like uh, pure puritanic uh, uh, yeah. everything is taboo when it comes to sex and, and boobs and tits and ass and all yeah. that everybody's like oh I don't want to talk about this it makes me uncomfortable yeah. it's, because it's so, it's been bred in our yeah. psyche for so many generations right yeah. and I am like you I'm a guy it's easy to say for a guy oh, like but I am very it's very like I'm very comfortable if you ask my wife she'll be like she says it at least once a week if not more she says I've never met someone that's so uh comfortable with their nudity and their body yeah. and I'm like yeah. I'm like yeah I don't know I feel I feel comfortable especially around you yeah. I'm like you're my wife she's like I know yeah. but like and it's 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 nice to hear the perspective of a woman sometimes because like I, you know, I have a daughter and if you would yeah. have asked a 23 year old me, you would have been like, that guy's an asshole. Like that guy's a fucking yeah, asshole. Yeah, yeah. All he wants is to get laid. And that, when I was 23, like you can't judge me by who I was then. Right. The difficult thing. Okay. So the thing, the, the thing that I wanted to say to you when you were talking about, talking about your daughter, like, yeah. The thing I, 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 and I've said this to Mark before, because Mark has said to me, like, if we would ever have a daughter, like, I, I would find it hard to not say to her, like, you can't go out and you've got to wear trousers, you can't, you can't wear a short skirt, and, you know, and the, the complicated thing about that, and I'm happy that I will never be a father, because I feel like this is something that I will never have to deal with. Maybe I'll have to support him if we ever have a daughter, but uh but i will never have to deal with it but the most important thing for you as a dad from my own perspective is you i believe that fathers must never ever ever tell their daughter that she can and can't do certain things to do with her body and her sexuality because all that's doing is that's just teaching her to be conditioned by a man yeah and those are the kinds of girls that are then going to slip into a relationship with a guy that is going to be controlling and telling her what she can and can't do. And you can't wear this and you can't talk to my friends and you can't do this and you can't do that. And, and it's something that I think a lot of guys don't put two and two together and realize, you know, like I saw this video recently, this viral video of, um, um, you know how in the States, a lot of people now they have those doorbells with a camera. Yes. Yeah, so it's a video of this young lad. He's probably like 17, 18. He goes up to the door and he presses the doorbell and he's obviously there to meet this girl for a date. And the father comes over the, the tannoy and he comes through on the radio. Of the yeah, door. yeah, yeah. Have you seen it? No. Okay, and he says, um, he basically just starts grilling him. He starts quizzing him. Where are you, gonna, where are you taking her? Where are you gonna go uh, uh you know uh do you have money what do you do for a living you know and what kind of car are you driving like stuff shit like that okay yeah, yeah. and then the girl comes out and she's like dad what the fuck are you doing she doesn't swear obviously but she says well, what the hell are you doing and he says uh what are you wearing go back inside i need you to wear this and instead so she goes back inside she gets changed she comes back out Okay, what time are you coming back? We're going to be back at 11. Okay, you'll be back at 10.30. You know, like, and, and you're watching this. And for me, I was just like, this is disgusting. He's just like, I understand his perspective, the dad, but he's literally just like conditioning his daughter to then be just controlled by another man. And I went onto the fucking comments, which I shouldn't have done. And I went into the comments. Yeah. And like, yeah. yeah. And just full of people being like, yeah, and that's my man. Like, ah. yeah, what, a, what a model father, you know? Like, yeah. Oh, you, fuck you that shit. Like, like, fucking hell. You know? Like, oh, God. So it's, I, I, I completely understand if one day you, you find yourself doing that. Maybe yeah. Ava's going to go out for a date and you realize you're going to say to her, like, Darling, don't you think you're wearing too much makeup? Maybe it's just gonna it's just gonna come out of your yeah. mouth, you know? And 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 I guess like you have to just question like, ah, oh, how is that gonna then affect the way she interacts with men in the future, you know? It's messed up because 
as parents, you have the mother, you have a father. And so when it comes to a daughter, you see it completely different. The mother has a perspective that she could, that she feels like she has knowledge how to, to give her daughter, right? I am a woman. You're going to be a woman. Here's what you're going to need to know. Cause there's certain things that yeah. I won't be able to teach her or, or, or information that I will able to provide her. The thing with being a father to a daughter, and here's the difficult part of it. And there's something that is extremely hard. And I, I struggle with is that I have a son and I have a daughter and I always want to protect my daughter. I want her to be safe at all times. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, I kind of realized that I don't feel the need to worry as much about my son's protection mm. and my daughter's protection. And then I go, well, why not? Well, the, because she's a girl and he's a boy. He's physically stronger. When he's older, he's going to be physically bigger, physically stronger. I'm not being sh like an asshole by saying this, you know, it's just, it's, yeah. it's facts, yeah. right? Like, yeah. like yeah. guys, but at the same end, I'm like, if you're too protective, then you're going to be too controlling because then you're going to put on your shoulder that protection duty of yeah. your daughter instead yeah. of teaching her how to protect herself and mm. what to do in certain situation. Mm. And as a guy <laughs> that was once uh, an asshole-ish guy, mm. Uh, or that wasn't necessarily like, um, woke to certain yeah. cultures and certain ways of life. Uh, I can tell her how guys are most likely going to react and I could prepare her for that. Yeah. And I think that's how you have to take it instead of always wanting to be that protector and yeah. telling them, get dressed, take that skirt off, no makeup not that lipstick you look like a like yeah i can go down the road yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i feel that uh, my chances of not fucking up my kid in the future is better off just being let them be free let yeah. them experience yeah. and let them make their own mistakes and let them just provide them with the tool that when they do make a mistake they'll be able to get their there's way their, their yeah. themselves out of it and they'll be like Oh, well, I won't do that again. Yeah. And then they'll grow with the That's experience. It. That's it. That's if I would give any recommendation about uh, to a father, someone that's going to have a daughter or that's just having a daughter, that's what it is. It's like your, your instinct from day, minute, second one that you're going to see your daughter, it's going to be the love you feel for your daughter is like nothing you feel for your, for your son. Mm. Like I parent my son or what completely different than the way I parent my daughter yeah. simply because I want my son to be prepared in a certain way and have certain tools in life. Mm. My daughter, I want her to have the similar tools, but I also know that she's going to be, she's going to have to get, she's going to get some dick pics at one point and I'm going to have yeah, to deal with that I'm reality. And she's right. going to have to, like, even, even other shit, like, she's going to have to fight to be listened to in the yes. workplace. And she's going to have to fight to make sure that she's not being paid less than anyone else because she is a girl. She's going to have to make sure that she's not teased. You know, like, yeah, it, it doesn't just stop at, like, shitty, slutty boys. Like, it, yeah. it, it, it's literally just today. I'm going to send you the video. You're going to be shocked. Just today I saw this, like, shitty video it's this beautiful 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 advertisement where it's about how there are more and more girls that um are becoming inventors that are actually inventing products and and technology that we now we need and 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 it, it, you know like now more so than ever it's so important that we start teaching our girls that it, if you feel it necessary to go down um, a route of like technology and engineering, fucking go for it because you know women. They they we need to we need to get more women in this kind of field. Essentially, that's what it's kind of saying. And it's this beautiful, beautiful video following these three young girls. One is like sixteen, one is twelve, one is like thirteen. And then it ends with 
it ends um, with one of the girls being given a box by her parents. And it looks like it's going to be like an ad for like, I don't know, some kind of maybe technology software or toy or something that a child, a girl can interact with that is going to teach her about technology and engineering. No, bitch, no. She opens the box. Do you know what it is? A dildo. No. <laughs> I wish. That would have been incredible. You know? Like, yeah. No. Miss Monopoly. It's Monopoly that has been remodeled so that young girls who are interested in engineering and technology can now play Monopoly. Because before we were, we were what? We couldn't play Monopoly? We couldn't understand the, what it was to buy and sell property? Like, what the fuck? Ah, uh, that hurts yeah. my brain. It hurts my brain to hear shit like that. Because, ah. <laughs> uh... I'm going to send you the video. You're going to just, yeah. you're going to watch the whole thing. You know, wow, this is so beautiful. This is so lovely. And then the last second, you're going to be like, what? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no. I, I get it, though. I get it. But uh, the last thing I'm going to say on this is that the reason why it's so dangerous is that as much as you want to protect your kids, your, your assumption that your daughter is going to need more protection because she's going to be obviously physically weaker or smaller and you have to deal with men that are bigger, stronger and be able to, you know, do whatever ragdoll her around. Instead of going, well, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to protect her. I'm just going to be there for her. I'm just going to follow her around. It's like, stop being fucking lazy. And instead of being that asshole, teach your daughter how to deal with the disadvantage of being physically weaker and being yeah. all that. And give the, her the tools to level up to the same level as her big brother or as her brother or the other male so that they're on the same level. Yeah, I'm yeah. smaller, but I, I know jujitsu. And if you attach me, I'm going to choke you in about three yeah. seconds. Like, yeah. it's your responsibility to, as a father, as a parent, to figure those things out. It, it's not equal. There's, there's certain there's differences when it, you're, 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 you're a boy and a girl. But as parents, you have to be able to teach give them the tools that are going to bring them to the same level instead of just being like, well, I'm just going to take the shortcut. I'm just going to be an overbearing parent the whole life. And I'm going to ruin my daughter's life. My basically ruin my daughter's life. Right. Yeah. So, that's all. Yeah. I wish, I wish I could talk to you, uh, forever. <laughs> Steph. I know it's pretty dangerous talking with you because we can just talk and 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 like I didn't I didn't go down that road because I knew it would take it would take an even it would take up even more time but like I think you and I have spoken about this before that we both I think we had a very similar upbringing and that we like we both left home at 17 yeah we both went off and we had to like we come from poverty and we had to like fucking strive to make anything of ourselves and, well yeah. you know what we could keep that story for a different episode uh, because it's been two hours already and i have to go back to uh putting my kids to bed unfortunately yeah yeah i love look you're like the, from the first moment i met you yeah uh, i felt like you were one of those uh person that really under that there was no bullshit you're very transparent about how you feel and about your beliefs yeah. And you're also very transparent that you're not this saint, this, that you're not perfect, that you've made mistake and that you're still dealing with some of the mistakes you've made. Yeah. And that's how I feel too. It's like people want to hide from their past. A lot of the times they just want to forget it and move on yeah. without realizing that you just can't no. leave something behind because it's, it dragging you down. It's a process to shed that thing. Yeah. I, that's why I use the analogy of scabs. I'm like, right now <laughs> I'm in the process of taking out as many scabs as possible yeah. so that I'm able to graduate to the next level of my life or be able to just take the step to move forward and yeah. grow as a person. So, I think that comes from moving home from very far away, the fact that you got up and moved halfway across the country and I moved across an ocean as well. And yeah. when you move, before you've moved, 
you think, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just fucking get up and move and I'm going to be able to leave all that shit behind and I can start again. And it's like, no, you're going to take with you those same mistakes. You're going to take with you all the bullshit that you had behind you. It's just going to follow you. But now you're going to have maybe a little bit more space and time to be able to learn how to deal with all that and make yourself a better person. Yeah. Going forward, you know? Yeah. It's all about growth and like you have to constantly strive to be better just a little bit every single day. And yeah. if I live that way, I believe that you'll, you'll forget. People want to think that there's, a, there's an end to all this before they die. They're like, I want to get to a certain point. That's going to be it. That it'll never end. You will, you will grow every day until you don't breathe anymore. So if yeah. once you kind of start realizing that, it makes puts things in perspective where you're like, well, I just got to keep digging. Now, don't put a timeline. That's one thing that I've removed is like, stop putting deadlines to your yeah. goals. Just pick your vision and build towards that vision. And if it takes three years, it takes three years. If it takes yeah. 20 years, it takes 20 years. Just enjoy the fucking ride and enjoy the ride. Enjoy but the process. Monday. It can't take just two months. It, huh? might just take, it can't take two months. It might just take a pandemic for you to be like, you know what? Fuck this shit. Fuck this shit. <laughs> yeah. You know what? For some, it will. But yeah. for others, it will just realign them on the right path. And then it's mm -hmm. up to them to if they want to go back or if they want to stay on this, this path. Mm -hmm. So true. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I, I, uh, I was looking forward to just talking to you. Like I said, like I could, I could do this without even recording it. I just enjoy yeah. having conversations <laughs> with people that, uh, that I can talk to, that, that it is easy to talk to and that share similar perspective and that mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about what I, what I say and what I do. No, no, absolutely not. You can say whatever you want. And that's it. Like, uh, I think that's that's the beauty of a really good friendship is that you can agree to disagree it might be that like you know we feel we feel like a certain kinship because of the fact that we share so many values and morals but then when we hit when we realize like oh shit actually we don't see eye to eye on that yeah thing. and that's true okay sometimes yeah true friendship is where you can you're like okay that's fine you know what that's absolutely fine and I understand your perspective and hopefully you understand mine and we're just going to keep walking down that path together. Yeah. Another thing I think people need to start realizing is to not be so steadfast in their beliefs, to not be like, I believe in this, I'll believe in this for the rest of my life, no matter what information you bring forward. No, nah, yeah. bitch, sometimes you got to go like, uh, yeah, maybe I should start believing this way. Maybe I was yeah. wrong. Absolutely. People can't, People have a really hard time admitting when they're wrong because a lot of the times they have to admit they've been wrong about something they've been believing their whole life. Yes. They're like, fuck, I've been believing this my whole life and now it's not what it is. Oh, I can't. I have to keep, I have to keep it on, fuck it. It's too much yeah. work. Yeah. That's it. Stay That's safe, please. Yeah, um, you do. When, when everything starts to calm down a little, Maybe the four of us could like hang out on like a park bench. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's a date. We can be distanced. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I appreciate you gave me a couple of hours of hours of your time and yeah. allowing uh, us to have Thank such a great conversation. Happen. I'm gonna send you that video. I'm gonna send you that ad. Please do. Yeah, it's depressing. Good luck. <laughs> I'll watch it later on when I'm really, really high. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you look love after the line. Yeah. All right. And I'll say hey to Christy and the kids. I will and say hi to Mark for me. I will love. Okay. All right. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Well, that's it for episode thirty nine. I really hope you enjoyed my conversation with Jade Salter. If you haven't done so, check out episode thirty eight for part one of our conversation. Also, if you haven't done so, don't forget to subscribe to This Savage Life, available anywhere podcasts are available. Also, check out my YouTube page, Savage Paulson. I load up all the episodes of This Savage Life to the YouTube page. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification button. Hit all the buttons. 
I appreciate the fuck out of every single one of you that's taking the time to download, share, talk about this savage life. It's uh, it's greatly appreciated. Um, you know, it's uh, having a podcast, putting out content, putting yourself out there like that. It's not something that a lot of people understand or why or it's just for some reason um i see podcasting as an opportunity to number one be transparent about who i am and hopefully um like i've said in the past even if it only helps inspire motivates one person it's good enough because you know that's it. I mean, it's like sometimes when I was younger and, and when I was, you know, I needed help. I needed to be inspired. I needed to be, I needed the motivation. Um, I, I wish I could have had someone, something I could have listened to or watched that would have given me a different perspective on things or uh, have offered me uh, uh, different solutions on things. And and this is really what I try to do with this podcast. I, I'm just putting myself out there, uh, being as transparent as possible. And now with the guests that I have on, I just, if you know me, you know, I just love having a great conversation and through podcasting and having guests on, I choose who I have on. I choose who I ask and it just, it's great. And I'll be right there. Thank you, baby. That was my daughter telling me I got to go eat. So. Thanks again for listening to episode 39 of This Savage Life. Again, don't forget to subscribe. All right. See you later. Much love.